beautiful astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace, and here is your weekly horoscope for the week of February 22nd. I can't even believe we're closing in on the end of February. Where did the time go? But this week is interesting because we're on the heels of having the Saturn Uranus square last week. So we have definitely seen a reordering or an uprooting of some things in our lives, certainly out there in the public. And this week, there's not as much of a power struggle that's on the table. There's actually a lot of drive available for us to get things done in a very, very focused way. So I really actually enjoy the energy that's available to us this week. And I think if we wield it correctly, we can actually use this week to get a lot done and rolling into March. March is one of the greatest months I think that we have available energetically in terms of things moving forward. So let's get in here and talk about what's going on this week. But first, I want you to keep in mind that the eat and greets are, of course, still happening. And as we're pulling through February and moving into March, April, May, there is so much going on. Not only do we have the YouTube Academy that will be starting here on this channel, just as we get to the spring equinox, OPA has got their conference coming up. Norwalk conference is coming up. Sasha Benedetti, Christina Caudell, they both have summits that are coming up and I'll be bringing you information on all of it so that you can take advantage of astro education and astro opportunities to be learning, growing, and experiencing not only with the astrology community, but in your astrology as well. So look for more details to come on all of that. And you can also check out information at stormygrace.com right there on my calendar, okay? All right, let's talk about what's happening this week. So as we're blowing into the week, like I said, I feel like there's less of a power struggle happening. There's less of an uprooting that is kind of happening for us personally and out there in that global climate as Saturn and Uranus have squared. Like it's already happened. It's done. Now they are in the separating of that particular exactness of that square. So one of the things that I think is a continuation without so much of the power struggle this week is an awareness. Something I'm doing, something I'm thinking, something that has maybe like it happened at the exact of that square last week and now it is showing me. I'm aware of what is this bad habit? What is this old thing? Where do I need to be more flexible? So as we're in this week and we're traveling, we know it. We see it. There has been maybe some kind of revelation of I've just been too fixed, too solid right here and I need to allow new energy, new life, new ideas to flow into it. So we get to Wednesday and we're going to see Mars come into a trine with Pluto. And I have to tell you, Mars is in um, Taurus and we've got Pluto over here in Capricorn. They're going to meet together in this trine at 26 degrees. So make sure you locate that on your chart, okay? But I have to tell you, I love the drive that is available between Mars and Pluto. They are both very driven. This time they are interacting with each other in a pretty positive aspect. So this is the energy that I feel like gives a lot of hoof, a lot of oomph to what we're doing in order to move something forward. We are focused. We are driven from the inside. We're willing to investigate things and ask questions. I love this word for Mars and Pluto, investigate. Go investigate what's going on. Are you investigating astrology? Are you investigating something in your life? Are you investigating and moving towards an opportunity? You can do that under this particular influence and it's powerful. It's a powerful, positive day for getting things done, but getting them done typically in a way where you're not having to cause all kinds of disharmony and chaos. It's just motivation and drive, full on going forward. So enjoy that energy. Look at where that 26 degrees is happening so you can see where you will have the most access to that particular energy. Now, as we get to the 25th, we're going to see the sun in a sextile to Uranus. When the planets have sex, that's good for us. Really enjoy that. We'll also see Venus entering into the energy of Pisces. But let's talk about this sun Uranus sextile. Now, first of all, we know that they've got to be in compatible signs if they're in a sextile. So we've got the sun here in Pisces. We've got Uranus here in Taurus, so we've got an earth water um, sextile going on, and they're at seven degrees, okay? As the sun and Uranus come to the table, Uranus is still Uranus. So bringing some surprises, maybe bringing, and, and surprises is, doesn't have to be a negative word, so don't take it there. It could be a surprise or some kind of unexpected 
um, outcome or result comes to the table. And it's really lovely because under the sun and Uranus in a sextile, it's typically something positive. And remember, in the sextile, it's not just the ease of it. It's a pocket of opportunity that is given, but we normally take intelligent action. So it's like opportunity meets action where you take your creative talents, you take your Piscean talents, because that's where the sun is beaming in that area of your chart, and you put it together with the opportunity that Uranus has created the opening of, and we do something with it. We create something really lovely with it. As Venus is also here into the energy of Pisces, giving a dose of love to that sun, and of course they're not, you know, they're not exact, but as Venus rolls into Pisces, she's going to soften this area. She's going to beautify it. There's a harmony. There's a diplomacy. I also love that Venus coming into Pisces on a day where you have an opportunity could also be financially or relationship beneficial to you as well. So this idea of having, you know, we have this drive over here from something that we realized last week, then we come into Mars, Pluto. Now we're here in Sun sextile, Uranus, Venus coming into Pisces. It's really like the week does flow together if we allow it. Now, as we work our way to the 27th, we get to the full moon that's happening at nine degrees of Virgo, okay? Now, this particular full moon, I think, does create a little bit of challenge. Now, the full moon says that we need to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. While this moon is relatively positive, we got the full moon in trying to Uranus, which is just fabulous. Love that because that, again, brings this element of unexpected to the table and it can be unexpected in a, in a really positive way. A positive surprise under a trine could definitely be available. But where this also challenges, if you look at the chart of the moon, the moon is out by itself. So this is really a challenge, I think, to where are you falling in line in your life and in your community? Where is that space of the group and you? Where is, where is there a blending or an acknowledgement or an adjustment that has to happen? Because it's like, where is the, um, Where's the ability or the willingness to conform maybe to a new normal or to something new that's on the horizon? Mercury is going to be traveling there with Saturn and Jupiter is just a little bit a ways away. Um, but also Mercury here is square to that Uranus trying to bring something surprising as well. So this can be an energy I think at this particular moon where things get tense because it's like you want to do and you want to be on your own or you're trying to find that space and somehow maybe it even feels like it's being cut down a little bit or there's something opposing it. There's something that is making it feel like you can't really shine your sunshine in some way, shape or form. But look for the different. Look at where you've maybe been too fixed. Where can you invite in a new idea or a new way of doing something and that Uranian energy I think and trying to this moon kind of gives you your out. It becomes the the um, the ease at this particular moon time. So you'll be able to find what you need. Now, I do think that the other thing is really important. I was talking about this with a student. I think that this moon is a reminder to each of us that whatever is happening around the idea of conforming for each of us, whether it be in the community, in our homes, in our industry, whatever that looks like, we are ultimately responsible for finding what we need, for telling the truth about where we are, what we're struggling with, what's going well, but we are responsible for finding the help that we need, taking ourselves to the whole, to the resources, in order to have our baskets filled with the information we need to be nourished with these new ideas and implementations that can be available to us. So I think if nothing else, as we close out this moon, and we roll around and we get to Sunday where we've got a grand earth trine happening, which brings things down and it kind of settles us a little bit. You know, remember, eat well, nourish yourself well, especially at the end of this week. And remember, we are responsible for how we're living. Everything in my life, I have a hand in how it is happening. I have a hand in what is going on. So take that with you this week as you consider what are you driving towards? What have you been shown? And what are you moving towards this week? And also, if you can, under a grand earth trying, do something delicious at home. You know, where do you need to finish that laundry? Where do you need to spend some more time with that person? Where do you need to scrub the bathtub? I mean, what are the earthy things that you could do this week that it will also give you a deep breath and make you feel a part of the great whole. And it's funny because you think cleaning the bathtub doesn't make me feel a part of the whole, Stormy. But I promise you, you will join the league of centuries of people 
who've also had to be great and be spiritual, but also clean the bathtub. All right, my beautiful friends, I love you a ton. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the Eat and Greets. I'll be bringing you information on all the astro happenings so you can sign up, you can attend. And remember, we will also be scholarshipping people to some of these conferences, and I'll bring you details about that as well, okay? Bye, my beautiful friends. Have a great week.